Hello everyone, welcome back to our Mudbox tutorial series. This is our uh, stone bridge we've been working on for a little bit now. Uh, we just started painting it last lesson. Let's go ahead and continue on the process. So we're going to go ahead and add some uh, some additional texture information to this. Um, I want to focus again on uh, the rises, which is the stone plates on top here. Um, so I'm going to go back to where it says stone wall, and I can create myself another layer. Um, to stack on top of this, um, but I think that will be a little bit unnecessary for now. Uh, I know it's a little bit destructive to paint over the top of this, but I think that's what I'm going to do anyways. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go to, let's say, let's do dry brush for now just to see if uh, we can stay out of accidentally getting set as crevasses. I won't have to use control now since I'm going to be painting on the rises and not the falls. Um, but I'm going to go over to, let's see here, let's, uh, let's break it up a little bit with this texture and we're going to go to um, white to begin with, that way I'll beat this color and let's just see what it looks like when I paint it over the top here with a, let's go with a strength, uh, let's do 50, see how that looks. Uh, not enough, but it is uh, breaking it up the way I want to. So let's go and bring this back up to, let's say, let's do 100 to see what the variation is there. That's actually a little bit more what I'm after. So now you can see it's kind of breaking up that single color we started out with, adding in some what might look as a little variation to that rock. I like that. Okay, I'm just going to Continue painting over the top here. Oops, got a little bit too close to the sides there. Oops, and now I zoomed in way too much. <laughs> um, this down. I don't want to get too close to the, the edges, even though I have the dry brush on and it's getting to the rises. I don't want to accidentally get down the crevices. So you can do a little bit too much again. With the dry brush, everything is uh, very kind of light, it seems, which is fine for this purpose. Um, if you want to drum in color a lot faster, you might want to just do it with a paintbrush. But um, since I'm trying to be subtle with adding this, uh, this color in, I'm okay with looking like this for now. Okay, that looks good. Look up here. Okay. Rubbing that dry brush all over in here and getting some of that color variation in there. Good, like that.
Okay, let's see how we're doing here. Let's see, we're making some good progress. I'm not really super worried about like where it got over a little, little bit over on top of the river rock. That's still fine. The, the ledges here. That's okay. Okay, so next step I want to do is I actually want to I'm going to build upon this. So I can continue on varying the colors of the stone that's going on here. That's how stone really is. There's a lot of different um, materials on the inside, but I'm going to accelerate the process. Mudbox has the projection tools, which is what we use to sculpt in this additional detail. Now, I could have used that right out the gate, but I didn't want to because I wanted you guys to have some experience with painting this stuff in. And also, it's straight up cheating to just take a projection. It makes it to where um, if you're doing an, a, inside of a game piece that you're going to have to do photorealistic art because what you just did is projected a photorealistic texture onto a 3D model. So all the rest of your models have to be at that same quality. So this helps uh, break that up to where it has this underlying um, realistic texture, but it has like this hand-done stylized texture on the top of it. So um, enough talking. Let's just go ahead and jump in there to create myself another layer. I'll just call this one uh, Stone Wall Project. Okay. Give it a minute. There we go. All right. So now I'm going to, and I want to make sure that crevasses stays on top because I don't want the projection to be down inside the crevasses if I can help it. Um, let's go ahead and turn on stencil. Okay. And this was the one. Let's see here. I think it was this one. That was the one we used. For our texture. So let's make sure we're looking straight at it that we don't have any kind of skewed anything. Okay. Turn on projection. Um, underneath projection, I still have uh, the oriented surface turned on, which may work okay. May I might have to turn that off. We'll see. Um, I might use a stamp here. I might also reduce the strength, but I'm going to go ahead and test it out first. Um, and I also don't really even need it on, to be honest with you, but let's go ahead and leave it on just for a second, and then I'll turn it off. Is it on right now? It makes it where I can really see where I'm trying to get this to. So I basically am like painting blind to begin with. Um, so if I turn it off, it'll, oh, no, I guess I do need to keep it on. Okay, never mind. Um, Okay, let's turn the strength down. Right now it's still at 30. Let's bring it down to, let's say, 10. Okay, that's better. Okay, so you see where that projection line is? That means I need to move the, the stencil. So to move the stencil, I just hold down S, middle mouse button. Move over the side here. So we'll fix that one right here. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to let's see here. I'm going to, I'm going to move my stencil again. This time I'm going to move it. Uh, I want this the one where I just clicked on. I want to move that one this time. That one right here. Put this one in. Move it again. I'm going to move it up over here. Make my brush a little bit smaller. Turn it on because it's. I need to actually texture this spot right here. Okay. Go with this brighter texture right there. I'll keep varying like the stone that I'm using. That way, it's not too repetitive. So I'm basically just going through and grabbing different pieces here. 
you can always scale it up too. So if you want to say I want this one to be bigger, so that the color is covering this spot a little bit better. Oh, so I can move it down again. Be very careful when you're doing this kind of projection work because if you're dealing with where we have sculpted detail in here and these all have crevasses in them and you're projecting on there, the sculpted detail may not match up with your projected paint detail you want it to. So just be careful. Oops. Accidentally set up a mask. That's not where we're at right now. Well, did it again. Then once I got started, I didn't want to stop. There we go. V is the hotkey for mask, and once you start it, it just brings you into the mask tool. Then I'm going to also kind of start to feather these from the edges and not go all the way. That way I'll let my painted texture kind of blend. Maybe I'll see if I can get that. There for the horizontal. Makes sense. So I didn't quite get enough in here. Make some good progress here, guys. Looking better. Okay, so now um, this is where you want to be able to go in and rein back your projected detail. Now, I know you might be like, oh, I don't want it looks good, um, but you want to blend with what you already sculpted or painted in. So I'm just going to bring this back, and this is non-destructive. So if I decide later on that I want to bring it back, I totally can. Uh, but you can see how now 
that stone detail is now blending as I get down to like 70. There we go. That's a good blend. So now I get all those minerals from my projected detail and it's mixing in with those those two different base color paints that I just stamped in and uh, painted in by hand. And that looks a lot better. Um, still got a ways to go on the crevasses. Um, I need to feather the edges a little bit better, but we're at over 15 minutes now, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this lesson and I'll pick it up in the next one. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next lesson.